Typhoon Seola intensifying rapidly near the Philippines on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for August 26. So a rapidly intensifying typhoon in the western Pacific near the Philippines and two tropical storms remain active today this August 26. 46 storms so far this year. We are code red for Seola's effects in the Philippines. Of course the local name there is Goring. Let's zoom in first though on the Atlantic where Franklin has had a torrid day to be quite honest. It's been mostly exposed and it's really been struggling but it could be on its way back now. Uh, three other areas of interest right now including a 70% chance entering the Western Caribbean into the Gulf of Mexico which is certainly going to send a lot of eyebrows raised. In the Eastern Pacific two areas of interest uh, survive the 30% chance near the coast of Mexico that was previously a much higher chance and a 90% chance further towards the west there a system that should form relatively soon and move out over the open waters. Western Pacific we've got Seola just off the coast of Luzon and a 90% area of interest to the east dam strengthening as well and could become a typhoon tomorrow as it heads very quickly towards the coast of eastern Japan. That 90% system is likely to become a large typhoon next week and could become a real substantial threat. We'll get on to Seola in a moment when we look at its store uh, at the storm in isolation there. In the Indian Ocean uh, we've just got a few clouds there spurting along over Bangladesh and in that general area. Signal 2 warnings for the northeastern tip of Cagayan and northern coastal Isabella right now for Typhoon Seola, Philippine named Goring. Signal 1 warning for the Batanas Islands extending down towards the extreme northern part of Aurora. It is 123 kilometers from Santa Ana, 202 from Tugugaro, 247 from Basco, 284 from Itbayat and 380 from Baguio. We're rating it right now probably with winds around 120 miles per hour and strengthening rapidly. Franklin looks like this at this moment in time, 409 kilometers from San Juan in Puerto Rico. It's actually moved a little bit southwards compared to yesterday. Bermuda still 1166 miles away, uh, kilometers away, sorry. Cape Hatteras 1679, Nantucket 2158 and Halifax 2538. Some of those numbers have risen. The storm has moved slightly further away because of that southward jog earlier in the day. Drop the storm right now, about 50 mile per hour winds, that's the National Hurricane Center's take on it as well. Let's take a look at some satellite imagery then. Uh, this is a wide shot off the Western Pacific showing all three systems there. That central invest looking really good there on that imagery actually. That could be a tropical cyclone pretty soon. But here's a close up on Seola right now. A compact storm, a small storm. It fits completely into our floater frame on the Force 13 website. And the eye really starting to pop out now. Really looking quite impressive. And I would say it's uh, decent for category three status there. And really showing uh, possible what it could be made of uh, in the near future. Very small, its gradual motion will be towards the south, but it's slightly east there of south now by the looks of things, and that loop will take place at some point, and then it will curve back towards northern Luzon. Now this is Franklin, uh, not looking very good as you can see, but convection is starting to blow up a little bit closer to the center now, so it's really had a tough day, uh, but I think from here on in the storm will get better, um, and the National Hurricane Center still uh, in line with predicting a high-end Category 2 for the storm's peak and that might be at its closest pass to Bermuda. They've got a 10% chance of storm force winds. Now this is Damri They're looking quite good right now over one of those tiny islands there. I think that might be, could be Minami Torishima but I can't remember uh, but it's probably uninhabited and it's really starting to get itself sorted. It's uh, odds are a little bit against it there but it should become a small little typhoon uh, as it heads towards the coast of eastern Japan and then curve away at the last minute. 
Sea surface temperatures in the eastern Pacific look like this, a long corridor of warm waters in the deep tropics and the coast of Mexico still looking good, but there is a notable little gap there where Hillary was last week. Now the Atlantic, Gulf of Mexico still piping hot, 32 degrees, that's why we're really concerned about this upcoming storm in the Gulf. Uh, in the Western Atlantic, still looking good there as well, Franklin will have decent times ahead. So real concerns there for both of those storms strengthening by quite a bit. And this is the Western Pacific showing a large area there of 30 degree plus waters once again. Where Sayola is right now, it's around 30 to 31 degrees Celsius. And that will remain the case all the way into the South China Sea. And even if it moves north towards Japan, the Ryukyu Islands are pretty warm once again. The Bay of Bengal around 29 degrees Celsius at maximum there and the Arabian Sea very warm in the very deep tropics there but uh, further up it's quite a bit cooler. Southwest Indian Ocean in its off season and just about chugging along there with 26 degree waters off the coast of Madagascar and around Australia uh, a few areas there in Western Australia and the Northern Territory that's holding on to 26 degrees Celsius waters right now. Fiji on that threshold as well, as is French Polynesia and the southern half of Vanuatu. Compared to average then, this is how it looks. The Western Pacific is generally slightly above average, one or two little cool slots there. Central Pacific quite cool near Hawaii eastwards and then towards the Eastern Pacific, uh, but warm in the very deep tropics. Atlantic is still quite a bit above average, not quite as much as earlier in uh, the last few weeks, uh, but still nudging up towards two to three degrees above average in a few important spots, most notably the track ahead of Franklin and that invest. Now this is the oceanic heat content which is absolutely baking in the Caribbean Sea uh, and a one or two little pockets there in the Gulf as well. Off the coast of Mexico looking decent for a few spots there as well uh, and towards the western Pacific. Uh, good values once again uh, extending towards the Philippines although some of it is already being upwelled a little bit there. Computer models then, this is the GFS for the next five days showing what we expect will happen in the Atlantic, circling where this formation point is for this upcoming invest which is now becoming uh, certainly on the models more decidedly a tropical cyclone gets near hurricane force there as it moves towards the Florida panhandle so obviously a lot of people will be sitting up and paying attention to this and Franklin moving northwards there quite comfortably passing Bermuda probably giving tropical storm force winds there actually and becoming a category two is the Western Pacific, so a brief development there on the Eastern uh, system, uh, but doesn't really get very far by the looks of things. The Western one does much better, gets towards hurricane status, borderline by the looks of things as we get near the end of that five day period. Northwest at first, and then it starts turning quite a bit more towards the West, fairly early on actually in that track, and it will keep going in that direction for a fair while after that. Western Pacific then watching these potential three systems. Sayola on the left hand side is obviously the most important one to watch. Maybe slight weakening there but strengthening again as it turns northwards in that loop and then turns westwards and really peaks in between the Philippines and Taiwan, possibly over the Batanas Islands. Damri up towards the top right there, really getting close to the coast of Japan. It always looks like it's going to hit but then it curves away at the last minute as a, as, as a category one typhoon by the looks of things and that big storm forming in the gap of all of those systems there as well and another one to its east on the GFS but other models don't support that. Rainfall is going to be a big threat still from Sayola right now and we're looking at it uh, moving up the southern part of Taiwan and now we can see the southern part of China also getting implicated in those uh, high amounts of rain. There's also seriously enhanced rainfall over Mindoro there as well in the Philippines up to 30 inches that's 750 millimeters out at sea 48 inches there but on land over Luzon it looks like we'll see around 12 inches of rain on top of what we've already seen so far that's three millimeters and a little bit higher in Taiwan and in southern China. Now a few of those spots to the east as well from those other areas of interest six inches on the Mariana Islands 150 millimeters and on Yap two inches there that's 50, millim uh, 50 millimeters. A lot going on I know but this is Franklin <clears throat> Franklin moving off past uh, Nova, Nova Scotia and Newfoundland 
and we'll also see that other tropical cyclone that moves through the Florida Panhandle and then it sweeps up northeastwards. Well, it doesn't actually, it gets left behind over the Appalachians there and it looks like it dies out completely. But certainly Newfoundland, uh, the storm Franklin does move a little bit further away on this latest run compared to last night which called for a direct landfall. So that might be some good news with the western side being by far the weakest by that point. Now here's this other system in the eastern Pacific, uh, weakening by this point, still a tropical entity for a little bit longer and then it turns post-tropical a remnant and eventually gets towards the Hawaiian Islands, we'll get quite close there as a remnant low. Well I was tripping over my words a few times there in all of this uh, activity that's going on, it is that time of year. And here's the Western Pacific, then what happens with these three systems, see all the way on the left there, moving into China, possibly Hong Kong there, uh, as a Category 1, and then this really large typhoon, look at that go, uh, very powerful in the longer range here, day 5 to 10, a severe landfall in the western part of Japan, not sure whether that will happen yet or not, but certainly something to look out for, an enormous wind field, it's almost as large, about half the size of Japan there, and that looks like a Category 3 landfall on Western Shikoku. Scan the barcode and that will take you through to the Force 13 store where you can check out all of our items including our full season and individual storm animations and are still waiting for Hone t-shirts in the only basin that's not getting activity this year at least not so far in terms of homegrown anyway. In the silly range then, uh, not to be believed usually, but let's take a look. Western Pacific has this large, uh, another system here moving through the Japanese islands, and then maybe another one forming down the South China Sea as well towards the coast of China. And we've started with the Western Pacific because we're ending with it, uh, because there's nothing else going on around the world in the super long range tonight. Uh, which is interesting because that's the peak of Atlantic hurricane season in that projection and not a sound in that period there. Force 13's Eastern Tour also happens at the peak of hurricane season. Great timing. We're in Athens, Singapore, Cebu and Hong Kong in September. If you want to join us, meet and greet or whatever, you can send us a message, contact at force13.com or contact us on social media. You can also join us on Discord, discord.gg slash force13 for tropical weather and general weather chat with over 3,600 uh, weather watchers from around the world. On this day, another breathless day, and look at this, 12 different areas that could be considered tropical cyclones. Olive, Ione, Kirsten, Lorraine, Joyce, Maggie, 8L, 9L, 20W, 19W, Mary and Polly were all active on this day in 1974 with Ione being the most powerful, Category 2 at this point, right at its peak intensity. Mary was on its way out, it had just struck Japan and would quickly turn post-tropical, and 9L, I think, was going to become a name storm, and I can't remember what the storm would have been, but I'm sure you'll let us know in the comments. The next name in the Atlantic is Idalia, and a lot of people are getting concerned about that. In the Eastern Pacific, next up is Irwin, and in the Central Pacific, of course, it is still Hone. In the Western Pacific, our next name now is Haiku. In the North Indian Ocean, it is Tej. So, an interesting period in the Western Pacific for sure, with Sayola becoming a significant threat. Signal 2 warnings, don't forget, are in effect. In the Australian region, the next name is Jasper, Southwest Indian Ocean, Alvaro, and in the South Pacific, it's Lola. That's all from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night.